I've studied many different species, evolution, ecology and conservation of giant tortoises, ecology and conservation of bats and of some birds, diversity of insects, snails and all other invertebrates, plant and forest ecology. A common theme with most of this is how species and ecosystems interact and evolve and how this influences their conservation needs. A major research interest has been the conservation of South Pacific tree snails. The Pachula snails of Tahiti and nearby islands were the focus of the very first field studies of evolutionary genetics over a hundred years ago and were very significant in the development of modern genetics in the 1960s. But in 1967 giant African snails were introduced to Tahiti. These rapidly became an agricultural menace and predatory snails were released in a misguided attempt to control them. The predatory snail Euglandina rosea, or the rosy wolf snail, is a voracious predator of other snails. But not surprisingly, they don't like eating the large, leathery, giant African snails. Instead, they found the parchula tree snails to be the ideal food, and they would eat them as quickly as they could find them. Within five years of being introduced to an island, Yugolandina eliminates almost all the tree snails. And despite the fact they don't control the giant African snails, people kept introducing Yugolandina to new islands. This has resulted in the extinction of most Parchula species, with a very few individuals of some species left in the wild, and some species surviving in zoos as part of conservation breeding programs. I got involved with this issue in the 1990s, when I carried out my PhD research on Euglandina, trying to work out why it had a devastating impact on some islands, but not on others. Since the extinction of the wild populations, attention has shifted to keeping the zoo populations going and monitoring what was going on in the wild. In recent years, Euglandina have vanished from most areas, probably because they've run out of tree snails to eat, and as a result, we've now been able to start reintroducing the zoo-bred snails back into the wild. This seems to be working, but we face a new problem. Another predator has been introduced. This time it's a flatworm, the New Guinea flatworm, Platydemus manaquari. It's an even more efficient predator than New Glandina. It eats all snails, and other worms, and even some insects. It's spreading extremely rapidly at the moment, turning up on new islands all the time, and it's now also spreading into North America and through Southeast Asia. My research has recently turned to this flatworm, trying to work out what its impacts are likely to be. Is this the final blow for the Parchula tree snails? Or might there be some hope, as the flatworm eats all snails, including Euglandina? And finally, how are these species' interactions going to be affected by climate change? The aim of all of this research is to help the efforts to save the last Parchula snails. In order to do that, I've re-examined the diversity of these snails. So taxonomy and evolutionary genetics are an important aspect. Ecology of all the species is obviously essential, and this covers looking at interactions, at diets, reproductive rates and behaviour. In order to try to predict what might happen in the future and how our reintroduction efforts might work, all this has to be put together into population models, covering the Parchula snails, their two predators, the habitat and the change in climate. So that's my particular interest at present, but I'm always interested in new directions. And the great thing about biology is that there's always something new to find, or to observe, and absolutely everything is interesting.